Ah, buongiorno. That means hello in Italia. That's Italian for Italy. <laughs> We're gonna do something Italian today, okay? I'm just extracting some of the water from my cornmeal mush or polenta. Could be called either one, and we're going to be using that in tonight's recipe, mustaccioli. Mwah, che bella. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a couple of can, uh, a couple of jars of marinara sauce. I got some water on the boil to cook mustaccioli. Now, what is mustaccioli? Mustaccioli is nothing more than just penne that's not rigid. See how nice and smooth it is? Penne is rigid. This stuff. Very smooth. And this smooth Italian dish is going to be a whiz if you know how to prepare it. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. For the marinara sauce, we are going to use fried polenta. Be careful, that stuff's wet. Maybe I should have wrung this out first before we started. That might have been a good idea. You see, in the top shelf of our refrigerator is kept really cold. And I mean cold enough for, to freeze. And when this stuff froze solid, we put it to the bottom shelf and quote, accumulated all that water from the ice that formed. So that's where all this water is coming from. But usually polenta is packed really airtight. Now you can make polenta yourself, but I prefer to get it pre-made because no fuss, no muss, it's already there. And that's going to get fried in our olive oil and then placed in our um, saucepan where we're going to be cooking the marinara. For the marinara sauce, we have a 28 ounce can of chopped Italian tomatoes, which makes what makes that Italian? The extra seasoning that goes into it. You got basil and you got oregano. Some of the good spices that Italian use all the time. And eggplant. Yes, I'm back with eggplant. And this time it's going right into our marinara. Now, what we gotta do, let's start with the polenta first. We're gonna cut our polenta into discs like this. Nothing more than that. Little discs like this. Now, cornmeal is gonna get everywhere which is fine and what we're gonna do yeah it's gonna be uh, a little bit dry now but I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible see and then it's falling apart everywhere just take the more solid of the discs and we're gonna harden them by frying them up in the frying pan over there now first of all we're gonna open up our extra virgin olive oil and we're going to just put a nice little dab of about a tablespoon down into the pan and this will help to uh, fry our polenta. Give it a nice swirl and carefully grab some polenta discs and just drop them down into the pan. Don't worry if they're not complete because once these harden up and get fried they're going to be cut into cubes and placed into our sauce. And why are we doing this? This is the way Sonic Blue makes his own special marinara for meals such as this. And that should be plenty of polenta. Hey, plenty of polenta, plenty of polenta, plenty of polenta, plenty of polenta. That's a tongue twister in itself, isn't it? Kind of cast this off to the side a little bit while we work on cutting up, you guessed it, the purple wonder itself in the vegetable kingdom known as the eggplant. We're just going to cut the tip of that right off of there and discard. Now, also helps to have a clean surface to work on. We're going to cut these guys into discs, just like the polenta. Always helps to have a sharp knife, then a dull knife, because a dull knife in your kitchen is a lot more dangerous than having sharp. You just watch what you're cutting and make sure you don't cut into your thumb. Ah! Sorry, I didn't see you there. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, just cut the butt right off of there. And then, there you go. Now, we gotta get all of that skin off the edges. The easiest way to do that is just go around once they're cutting the discs and just cut the skins right off. Now, you know why they call this vegetable an eggplant, don't you? As I mentioned in previous videos when we worked with eggplant before, the reason why they call it an eggplant is not because you use egg in the recipe. And only some recipes you call call, uh, call for eggs. And that's only if you're deep frying it. The reason why they're calling it eggplant is not because of what's on the outside, not because of its shape, but because of the color of the eggplant when you get to the inside. And it's got an off-white color, almost resembling that of eggs, egg whites. That's where the name eggplant came from. 
Or it could have been some Italian family going, uh, Hey, you got the egg a plant. No, I did not plant the egg. I cannot get the egg the plant. Well, I came up with the next best thing. Yes, it looked like an egg. They called it an eggplant. I don't know if that's the exact history on an eggplant, but I'm pretty sure Google has some information you can look up. And you can find Mustaccioli made by Barilla. Barilla makes the finest in uh, Italian noodles. So don't forget the name. Barilla makes everything. Now, how many Italians out there are going, yeah, Barilla? Okay, let's see if I can find this. There's my spatula. There's my big spatula. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to check our polenta. Make sure it's nice and crispy on the one side before we turn them over. And they are smelling really good. I like them nice and crispy like that. Golden brown, delicious, yum yum. You might need to add a little bit more olive oil to that, but actually, I'm pretty pleased. We're going to dice our eggplant. So, we're going to get a, a few identical sized pieces. It looks identical. I'm going to do three at a time here. Here we go. I'm going to cut them into matchstick sizes, like this. And then, take the flattest part and make sure that there's no excess there. And dice them up, 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 and there you go. We have two big pieces now. We want to make sure that we have a nice, beautiful boil for them staccioli, and then we're going to reduce the temperature down to, to, down to a lower uh, temperature, about a medium low, and that'll be right around where it's a little maybe about the four, the gas mark four. We're going to turn it down to that, and we're going to add our mustachioli to it. But don't forget, when you ever you cook with noodles, always add a dash to your boiled water of extra virgin olive oil. And why do we do that? Because it makes your noodles nice and slick and it won't stick to each other. Well, I'm at it. I'm also going to add a shake or two of sea salt to our water to ensure that it breaks up all of that starch. Now, let's go with our marinara. In opening jars, it's very easy to do. All you have to remember is you have a flat part of your palm. Use that to whack it a couple of times underneath the jar and that will help you remove that cumbersome jar that's on the top of that. And you can open jars with the greatest of ease that way. You don't need any jar grippers. All you need is just a little, little strength on your palm there. Easy as pie or easy as marinara. Okay, now that's good. That's going to be some good marinara. And why are we using marinara sauce as opposed to spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce? Well, marinara is basically a base sauce consisting of the smallest amount of ingredients. And why do they do that to marinara? Because you might want to add a lot of ingredients later that might clash with the flavors that go into other sauces. That's why marinara sauce is nice and basic. So that way we can add the eggplant without having to worry about meats or mushrooms or anything you don't like. Same thing with polenta. We're going to make this from the ground up, especially with these Italian tomatoes. So what we're going to do, these don't need any introduction. All you got to do is just dump these tomatoes down into your sauce. The whole can and nothing but two jars of marinara sauce to, what did I say this was, 28 ounces. And that's uh, two 16 ounce cans, can also uh, accommodate very nicely in there. 28 ounce can of Italian chopped tomatoes. You can also add chili peppers, you can add uh, bell peppers, any kind of peppers you want to. Also, a little tip for you, save your jars, rinse them out a little bit, and you have the perfect vessel to keep all of your uh, grease when you go to dump it out, because then you won't have to clog up your drain with grease. Ew. So, come on over here, and we're going to stir. And we don't have the heat turned on this sauce yet, but it does not take long to cook marinara. So, uh, what we'll go ahead and do here is we'll just go ahead and turn it on very, very low and get it started and slow cook our marinara sauce to perfection. We are going to turn this marinara sauce on to its lowest setting possible and that way we're going to slow cook this stuff into perfection. And what a perfection it is. We have diced eggplant going into your sauce. And you can choose to leave any of the ingredients out of the marinara sauce, but this is my own recipe for Italian sauce. We start with marinara, you can add eggplant, and I like to add polenta. You can add peppers, meat, mushrooms, onions, garlic, anything you want to. In fact, we're gonna be adding <laughs> a 
some garlic to that already minced and in the jar. It's a little easier than having to do it by the cloves. So we got all of that eggplant in there. Now we're going to stir the eggplant into the mixture until it's all coated and covered with your sauce. And let me tell you, this is a wonderful sauce. We're going to add mushroom to this sauce too. We're going to add polenta to this sauce. This is going to be a vegetarian's dream sauce right here. There is no single meat going into the sauce, but you can add meat if you want to. Let's say if you're a carnivore. You can add sausage, ground beef, you can add meatballs, you can add chunks of beef if you want to, you can add pork, you can add chicken, any kind of meat you want make this an ultimate meat sauce. But I prefer for this special, specific kind of dish to make it a veggie one. We're going to take some of our hot, hot polenta and we're going to cut it as carefully as possible. Probably best to, since it's crunchy on the bottom there, might have to press down with our knife a little bit more. Now, yeah, it's going to make it crisp, crispy and it's probably going to break apart when it hits the sauce. But you're getting that nice baked corn or the fried corn feeling that you get in your sauce there. I love polenta when it's fried. As a matter of fact, you can eat polenta right on the side or Let's say if you're allergic to seeds. I know somebody who's allergic to seeds and can't eat seeds. So eggplant is right out because eggplant does contain seed. And there is no real way to remove the seeds completely from an eggplant. It is very difficult. Not like a tomato where you can just squeeze the seeds right out of it. Unfortunately, you don't get off that easily with eggplants. You have to cut around it and make sure the pieces that you do include do not have any seeds whatsoever. But chances are you probably won't be allergic to seeds and you can handle them anyway. But for times like that, if I have somebody who's got an allergic reaction to seeds, I do the next best thing, polenta. But I like adding both. But then again, if they're allergic to seeds, then you won't be using those tomatoes because they're loaded with seeds. No, you'll be cutting your own and extracting the seeds out of them. That's pretty much preparing food with people with special needs. There's their polenta. That's half of the polenta that we prepared. Give it a little shake, and then as you can see, it's all clumped back together. Look at that. And then just flip it over like so, and continue to cook. Maybe we could have added all that extra polenta in there after all, but that's okay. That's all right. We're gonna check our water now and make sure that it is up to snuff with adding our pistachioli. And if it isn't boiling as fast as you want it to, you can always turn up the flame, but keep an eye on what you do over here. Now, it's about halfway filled with water, and we're gonna add this entire box of pistachioli. And remember, we're gonna be cooking that for about 10 to 11 minutes. What did I say before, 20? Scratch that, reverse it, 10 to 11. Now, while you're waiting for that to cook, and if you want to, and work on these. But unfortunately, I did not prepare my deep fat fryer. So you know what? What's a few extra cubed? What's a few extra cubed eggplants gonna hurt? Not a thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cubing this up and adding it to our sauce. Because as they say in the kitchen in Italia, waste not, want not. Don't ask me how to say it in Italian because I'm not that good with Italian yet. Even though I have two Italian characters on the show, there used to be only one Larry Di Aldente. But now we have two. Larry's father, Pepe. And Pepe came to us in the form of a present that was given to us by Ronan and family. And I came up with a character on the fly because I noticed that his species was a border collie. And since Larry is a collie, Larry's father could be a border collie, and he was, by the name of Pepe. Now, his name came from the Italian word pepper, and it was basically bearing the colors of pepper. So we decided to call him Pepe, Pepe al dente. Now, where is Mama Michelina? 
Well, we still find Mama Michelina slaving away in front of her stove in the middle of Sicily, Italy, for her family, friends, and neighbors. All go crazy for cuisine of Italia. And that's one already cut. Okay. Cool. Okay. I thought I didn't cut that one. All right. Let's take all of this and just add it on top of the polenta there. You know, that's not going to be too bad. We've used that entire small eggplant and made it diced and we're adding each and every single cube to that sauce. We might not even have enough room for mushrooms like I've originally wanted to, because we got plenty going on in here as it is. And besides, you're probably wondering what we're gonna do with those mushrooms if we don't use them in here. We're gonna make pizza. <gasps> but not just any pizza, folks, because we are going to continue along with our Italian week with homemade pizza that has stuffed crust. <gasps> I am going to teach everybody how to do stuffed crust pizza. Oh yeah. It is a dish that my brother taught me how to do. And I'll show you how to do it too. It's very simple. Now you can see there is a mountain of eggplant in here. The polenta is mixed in nicely. You don't even see the chunks of polenta. Where is it? It broke down. But that's all right. I don't really look to cube polenta because it doesn't stay cube. It's too crumbly to stay cube. So it distributes naturally in the stirring. Okay, are we ready to add the mustachioli? One, two, three, yeah, there you go. Okay. We'll stir it with this spoon because it's the one that's the most readily available. Give it a good stir to make sure that it doesn't stick to one another and let it go. Now, we're gonna add about three cloves Actually, because of the volume, we're going to add five cloves worth of garlic. So not using that spoon, we're going to use a smaller spoon. We're going to use a smaller spoon. Let's use one of these. I wish I had a, slotted, a smaller slotted spoon. We'll have to remember that next time. Give this a good stir. And we're going to add about, that's about two cloves. That's about four cloves. And six cloves of garlic. Sonic Blue, how did you measure out cloves of garlic? I just know. There are some things you just know. And if you want to be an Italian cook, you have to add garlic to everything. Because garlic makes a meal taste better. It gives it a bite, and it keeps the vampires away. What we're doing is adding three quarters of a tablespoon. For a volume like this, you want onion to stand out three quarters of a tablespoon going in to your sauce. Again, Sonic Blue, how did you know that's three quarters? You just know some things. When you've worked around food as long as I have, you know how to measure all of your spices just by how many seconds it takes to pour out of the bottle. <laughs> A little secret there. Okay, what else do we need? Well, basil as you know, I always love to add basil to my noodles. This helps flavor the noodles and the water that it's cooked in. So, but none of it going into the marinara because it's got plenty of basil as it is. And what else did I need in there? Ah yes, the secret ingredient folks, red wine vinegar. Nothing but the best in red wine vinegar because this is Pompeian red wine vinegar. Just a little hole, and we're gonna add about that much. Not too much, because red wine vinegar has a strong aroma and flavor all of its own. What we're looking to do is just, we're looking to sweeten it up a little bit. Because I like spicy, I also like sweet. And this will give it a nice sweet and tangy taste that'll hit the back of your taste buds with a unique flavor that cannot be found in many and I do say many, not any, but many Italian sauces. So, if you want a little zing to your zang, add some red wine vinegar to your sauce. And it will hit your taste buds right in the back where it counts the most. Okay, now we're gonna kinda work that into the sauce very carefully. Now, 
as you get a closer look at the sauce, you can see the garlic cloves, you can see crumbles of the polenta everywhere. You see the eggplant, you see the tomatoes, you see the, ch the, the seeds that, that went into there, the, from the tomatoes there too. Oh, it's starting to smell wonderful. Oh, I wish you were here right now to smell the smell that I'm smelling right now. It is a most wonderful aroma and beautiful combination. Now this is good eating right here because if you're a vegetarian, you're watching what you eat and you can't eat meat, this is perfect. So, let's go over here and check our noodles. And to make sure that they have not stuck together, just give them a little push like this. You do want to constantly stir your noodles though. As we've been concentrating on making that sauce, and we kind of forgot to stir our noodles because the recipe does call for stirring your noodles constantly. Cleanliness in the kitchen is very important as well and you want to clean as you go. So that way there's not that much to clean later. And if you have a little time, I urge everybody to just pick up a sponge and start cleaning a little bit. You'll be surprised that your kitchen duties will be a lot more reduced if you clean as you go. I think we can probably close the door now, I think. Oh, why? It feels so nice. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so nice because look at all this heat that you got going on in here. Yeah, and I'm sweating all this. <laughs> but, as you can see, about 11 minutes later, your mustachioli will look just like that, nice and fluffy. And you can tell that they've expanded and reached al dente, which is firm, yet cooked. Move this over and we've got our colander in the sink. And here comes the noodles. All right, now we're gonna put that pot back. We're gonna take the noodles and give them a nice shake, just like this. Make sure all of that water is out of there because you don't want any water mixing in with your sauce because it waters it down too much. And that's how we make mustachioli. And look at all that basil that's still on the noodles. We managed to keep some of it too, and that's good. Let's put that back into the pot. There we go. Now, we're done with that. Let's put those bottles, put those jars away. Spoon can come over here. And I feel we are ready to serve. What do you think, Wolf Dog? I think so. All right, let's take it. Well, ever since we've moved here, I have not felt one single ounce of kitchen magic. I really haven't, you know? Why am I doing this the manual way? when I can easily bring back the magic of the kitchen. After all, I am the kitchen magician, aren't I not? I am going to make the plates appear, and not only am I going to make them appear, I'm going to do a double action magic trick. This hand is going to bring about the plates. This hand is going to serve them. So, one, two, are you going to see, are you ready for this? Okay, are you ready? Number one, plates. Oh, wait, you weren't ready. You weren't ready. You weren't I need you right here, right here, right here. Okay, ready? You ready now? Okay, watch this now. Okay, one, two, three, plates. One, two, three, serve. Ay, ay, maji, maji, the sauce, the sauce. What did happen to the sauce? Sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot the sauce. What is the secret magic trick for the sauce to appear? Does anybody know? Can anybody tell me what the secret magic trick is to make the sauce appear? It is, uh, sauce mole easy dozzy, upsy wupsy, and give me saucy dossy. No, that's not it. Um, Saucy in the my no saucy in my posse does not control no. I think I have it. I think I have it. It says just <laughs> marinara sauce so full of goodness. Top my pasta like you shouldness. That's the trick. I can't believe I remembered that. It's been so long since I did an Italian trick. But there you have it, mustachioli with a salsa de marinara. Mwah, que perfectimoso. And now, I like mine with a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. I know this isn't real Parmesan cheese. The Italians would say, why you gotta use that the Parmesan cheese? It's a fake. You know, you should use the one that's a real. It's a real. Well, you know what? It's the real stuff is very expensive. So, when in doubt. Just pick up a jar of this. I mean, it's the same thing, isn't it? Maybe not, but well, it'll do. You just cover the rest of that with that Parmesan, and you got an Italian dish that is to die for. And if your family members can only eat veggies, this will be perfect to make for them because not one single piece of meat is in here. Or if your family likes meat, just substitute all the veggies we have with lots of meat. I'm talking ground beef. 
beef, pork, chicken, bacon, anything you want to. Just add it and serve it. And that's mustachioli. I'm going to serve up some mustachioli to Wolf Dog, see how he likes it, and then we'll cut off here to uh, cut to the chase, and I'm going to chase my food into there in the living room, and we're going to queue up a little uh, Italian movie, maybe Zombie. No. <coughs> no? Zombie. It's a great classic. It's an Italian horror movie. It's kind of like uh, Night of the Living Dead, only in Italian style. Uh, I never really got into zombie movies all that much. Okay, then uh, we'll just watch Hercules. Anyway, for Hercules, really? No. For, for Gogan with Sonic Blue, I'm Sonic Blue Darkfold with Wolf Dog on camera, and we are just going to have a very beautiful time with this stuff. Now, yeah. now here's Wolf Dog, and here's the mustachioli. Mm -hmm. That's a big plate of mustachioli. You gonna finish that? Uh. That's a mustachioli challenge. I'm. Yeah, but unfortunately, you I don't do the challenges like you do. Ah, uh, then I'll just save it for myself. Okay, here, yeah. first bite. And let me know how what you think of our mustachioli. After all, it was your your uh, your idea. What do you think of mustachioli? Really good. Is it really? And what do you think of the sauce? I like the sauce. Even though it's a veggie sauce that has no ounces of meat in it, you still like it. All right, well there you have it folks, Mustachioli Vegetarian a la Sonic Blue. And we're going to take ours into the living room, we're going to queue up a movie, and we're going to relax. I'm Sonic Blue Darkfold, see you later! What we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and turn it on very, very low and get it started and slow cook our marinara sauce to perfection. So when everything here is ready, it is on. I didn't hear the come up, so begging my pardon. Anyway, now we're going to check. Our polenta. Whoa, that's a mess. Oh, watch out. I would have done probably two. Yeah, that was. That was going to be wise. Okay, let's. Last one. Woo. Yeah. Look at all of that polenta down there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I can't really. Whoops. Well. Well, think of it this way. At least I disconnected the one down here, so at least that's a good thing. Can you say Sonic Blue made an oopsie? Ah, uh, he made more than just an oopsie. Okay, how did this go on? <laughs> Are you trying to figure out how that goes on there? I think I got it. Yeah. There you it think is. you got it, Arthur? I got it. That's such a shame. Que lastima, serio? No, that's Spanish. How do you say Italian? How, how would you say that in Italian? I don't know. What a bummer! I cannot believe you threw in a money papalanta onto the stove top and I make up this food for you! That's how an Italian would do it. Granted, I don't know the first thing about speaking in fluent Italian, I just only know a few key phrases. Okay, now, take the polenta that didn't take a nosedive into the stove and add it to the rest of that sauce over there. And I'm looking for my minced garlic, which should be, which should be, do I If you can minced, find it. <laughs> do I, I, I know I have minced garlic in. He's trying to find it. Okay, this is the fun part of the, the show where we. <laughs> I'm trying to find I found an this. item. And you're never gonna believe where it is. Where? Right here, in the door. And you... I did not see it right away. Wah, 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 wah. All right. So, okay, here, yeah. first bite. And let me know how much you think about mustachioli. After all, it was your, your, uh, your idea. What do you think of mustachioli? 